What's up guys, that's GFX aka Look here, and today we have episode 7 of A Cuber's Life, and today we have Harry Savage on with us. So let's get on with the video. Harry Savage is a competitor from the United Kingdom who started competing in 2013. He has attended 52 competitions, has one world record, 18 NRs and 36 golds. Harry has amazing results over all events, putting him at the top of the summer ranks and kinship ranks in the UK. As well as this, he has two podiums in Euros winning FMC at the European Championships and third place in Pyramix and an absolute bunch of UKC podiums. Harry also has a YouTube channel in which he posts solves that he's done in comps and stuff like that. He's only got 228 subscribers, so let's get that up. There'll be a link in the description below. Hey guys, so big thanks to Harry for coming on. Hi. Thanks for having me. So let's just dig into the first question. So my first question for you is what does a typical week look like for you? In terms of school, work and that kind of stuff and how does kind of cubing fit into your schedule? Right, so at the moment, I'm on a, a gap year for people outside the UK. That's kind of a year after you finish your schooling and before you start university. Um, so I'm doing that at the moment. So I don't really have a huge amount to do during that. I'm working part time at a shop for three nights a week. And that's basically the only kind of planned activity I have every week. And especially at the moment when we're in lockdown, can't exactly go out and do everything the whole time. So although I'm seeing some friends now, we're still with restrictions and staying apart and stuff. Um, but obviously that means I have a lot of time to do things, it's just random things that I want to do. So queuing normally fits into that at some some stage. Um, I don't find myself practicing as much as I did when I was a bit younger, partially because I've just kind of lost the urge to want to be everyone else perhaps. Um, probably just because it's kind of getting a little bit boring. And well, the, the kind of practicing bits get boring. Competitions never get boring, obviously, because for the, the friendships and seeing people there. Um, so at the moment, I'll probably do a couple of practice sessions a week. I'm doing a little bit more at the moment. Um, practicing a lot of 5x5, five five, although I'm not really, not really getting... Well, I'm not really improving a huge amount, but hopefully hopefully at some point soon. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of just trying to practice what I enjoy doing a bit of FMC and rather than kind of forcing myself to practice certain things because it's because I'm slow at them basically. So I'll spend a couple of days, a couple of hours, a brief few days doing that. I spend a lot of my time, I, do you know the show, the TV show Countdown Luke? I do, yeah. You do, yeah, yeah. so I'm a big fan of that, um, which sounds a bit peculiar, a bit of a weird hobby to have, but um, there's a website that there's like a huge, well not a huge, there's a little community basically. Um, where people just play countdown against each other. So I've kind of discovered that and spent a lot of time on that in, the, in this past year. Um, so that's, it's, it's, I kind of spent a lot of time doing that and a lot of time playing, just cubing. Um, and other times I've just spent seeing friends or um, working basically. But because I don't have any schooling or stuff, um, I don't have to do any of that at the moment. But when I was in school, I was probably practicing, probably practicing more than I was now, just because it was a way of procrastinating from the homework I had to do, pretty much. Um, but now I have no idea how it will change when I get to university, though, because workload is supposed to be pretty high. Who knows what will happen there? But I'll try and obviously try and practice, and I'll still be going to the competitions even if I'm not practicing. So. Yeah, yeah I, would, I was literally just about to ask you what you kind of think oh, yeah. <laughs> for future plans, um, but I think you've just answered that. Um, yeah, well, it's still obviously very up in the air. Like, yeah, I, I got an email today saying that I will definitely be going to university come um, October time. So that will actually be starting, which is good. The question is how much work I'll have to do or what's happening there. Yeah. Still up in the air. Yeah. So... I think if we shoot back I don't know, a couple of years, maybe a few more, um, how would yeah. you say your kind of your practice 
um, how much of your practice was kind of straight solves and how much of it was like learning algs and other techniques and stuff like that? Yeah, so pretty much all of it was just solves. Um, I So if we kind of pick specific events, like for the 3x3, three three, when I was first learning, it was just kind of doing solves and learning algorithms at the same time. The learning full CFOP and full PLL. And once I'd finished learning that, it was basically just I practiced and practiced and practiced. I finished all when I think I was averaging about 15. There were just like a couple of cases that I had to learn. And then once I finished that, I haven't kind of ever sat down and le- forced myself to learn algs for three by three ever. Um, I've picked up lots of owls kind of through, actually through fewest moves because you have to kind of really think about move count and think about the algorithms you're doing. Um, so I've learned a few, kind of picked them up through through there, especially because lots of algorithms are kind of combinations of others. Um, so it's just, it's not really learning new algorithms, it's more just learning how to combine them basically, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so basically everything would just be straight solves, with the exception of this moves, which is just kind of its own, its own separate bubble, which is when you can't really do much, but I'd just kind of solve it but obviously the solves aren't normal solves and yeah um and other events like remember I'm, I'm really not very good at learning algorithms so if I do for example I don't know full eg1 which I feel like I really should do at this point like at my speed um and it's kind of just me just me being lazy really I've never forced myself to <laughs> force myself to learn algorithms in a long time um I feel like if I wanted to improve, that would be that would be the way forward. Just actually force myself. But then again, I don't enjoy that as much. So it depends what you're going for, really. If you want to improve, just like just improve, that's what you care about. Then learning algorithms would be what I'd be doing. But not how I feel about keeping at the moment. If that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. And obviously with event, other events like clock, <laughs> you don't exactly need to focus learning algorithms, but. Um, I've never really kind of done slow solves or kind of looked focused on my move count and that kind of thing. I've just been, I've just solved really. It's probably not the best approach, but it's worked for me all right so far. Well, yeah, uh, it's worked for you in basically every event, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to really every event, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, interestingly, for blind events, I just thought. Um, spend quite a lot of time when I was trying to improve at that coming up with a full list of letter pairs um like put it all in document came up with a good word for each set of letters and then that was something that I spent quite a lot of time doing and I think it actually benefited me so I guess I'm not necessarily fair on myself to say that I just am lazy all the time but just that's majority thanks for that um do you have a few questions kind of specifically about FMC um, yeah, yeah, sure. And just kind of your thoughts on kind of, let's say, progression. So, with stuff like kind of three by three, it's quite obvious. Okay, reach a certain point, learn full PLL. Reach a certain point, learn full OLL. Yeah. And then work on F two L, etc. With FMC, it's a lot more, from what I gather, at least technique based. Know lots of stuff. So, kind of what, yeah. what's your thoughts? FMC yeah, expert. so it's, it's yeah, it's very. Thanks for calling me expert. I wouldn't even call myself that, but um, it's yeah, it's definitely very different. Um, like going through by three with FMC, because with fewer means basically the rough idea is that you learn. It's really easy to get good FMC, which is what a lot of people don't realize initially. You if you once you learn a, like a couple of skills, so once you can do NIFs and you can do insertions then from that you're able to average sub 30 easily if you practice quite a, quite a bit. Um, it's just really the thinking about how you approach solves and not getting caught up in one particular start for the whole time, that kind of thing. The techniques that you will kind of pick up and you'll see people say, oh yeah, don't just... As Fabio Schwant, um, is <laughs> his rhyme that uh, he taught me, and it actually is something that I live by during FMC now, I you mentioned it, is if it's stinging, if you think it's stinging, find a new beginning. Which doesn't really make much sense. But it does. If you if you say stinging is like bad, then 
and if you just think something oh yeah there's probably not much from here or you spend too much time on it and move on it's, it's kind of the rough the, the fewest moves ideology i guess um so when you first start doing fmc and you just kind of trying to do a fox old just trying to do different things until you find a skip you probably average about 45 moves with that um if you just spend your whole hour just looking for different ways to solve it but then once you learn the new techniques and you can easily get down to underneath 40 with just a few solves and just by really thinking about it and especially when you're beginning this moves not bothering to keep to the hour limit that's something that helped me I could just focus on one scramble, looking at the trying lots of different things and working out which things worked. Um, so I guess it's a lot more like learning on the job rather than being taught a load of theory and then putting it to practice. But nowadays, with Domino becoming kind of more and more and more popular, and people have shown like Lewis Isom, the American guy who's now very very good with Domino, and he uses Domino almost exclusively. Um, that shown that there is moves kind of changing and there is like a specific method that you can use to just use that but you do still need the basic principles of insertions and this to be able to use that as well um so a lot of improving at fewest moves is like comes with practice um and working out within your souls what works and what doesn't work and a lot of it is and well, a kind of less lesser amount of it is um, the techniques and methods, um, because they're actually very easy to learn once you just kind of get your head around them. But in terms of improvement, really, once you learn the first few things, but just you just kind of keep on solving, keep on practicing, looking at other people's solves and seeing what they're doing on the same scrambles that you did, something that helped me a lot. Um, and from that, I was able to practice and get down to about sub 30 and then from there I was just had a lot of free time and I was just going and going and going and going and doing a lot of solves um, so basically it's, it's the same with lots of things just lots of solves will help but you need the underlying techniques to be able to improve basically well at least that's how I see it <laughs> thanks so what would you say kind of what's Cubing's impact been on your life, kind of, on two aspects, I'd say, kind of, one, on your kind of personal development, so, like, kind of seeing yourself change because of Cubing, um, and also, kind of, your, I guess, social stuff, because obviously, Cubing is a very social thing, and you're very, um, you go to lots of UK competitions, yeah. and for good reason. <laughs> Yeah, good reason being that not far too much free time, I think. But <laughs> um, obviously, cubing is an amazing thing, um, and I don't know how much it's sort of affected me personally because like, it's hard to kind of see how the impact on yourself. If that makes sense, because obviously, it's like um, you know when your grandparents see you and they haven't seen you in like two years, and they're like, "Oh, you've grown so much." It's not. It's not kind of the same because you see yourself every single day. Yeah. Um, I guess it's, it's a bit like that run. So I don't know how I've changed through cubing or what it what I would have been like if I didn't cube. Um, Personality-wise, at least, um, I think I've I've kind of gained a lot from it because I'm a lot more confident in kind of that, those kind of situations. Like, although I've only helped organise a competition, a competition in the past, um, I feel like I'd be I'm a lot more confident in that kind of situation now than when I began. Obviously, that just comes with going to lots of them. Um, but basically, just um, yeah, kind of growth of confidence, and um, I guess this kind of kind of goes into the social aspect as well. But kind of feeling part of the community is something that uh, obviously is really important to me. And I have obviously look, uh, I've lots of friends outside of Cuban as well. But people, I ever like the Cuban community is so wholesome other communities that I see are just not they're nowhere near like, there's always kind of sniper marks going being thrown here and there Cuban just everyone seems to pretty much everyone seems to love each other and there aren't any kind of bitter rivalries and everyone's at each other's necks which is obviously a really good thing yeah um, so I think it's partially that Cuban is such an amazing hobby and I'm incredibly lucky to have discovered it and um, have got involved with it 
really. Um, and I imagine, yeah, I imagine I've just kind of become more social and or more confident in large groups. So I'm, I think I'm probably naturally quite an introverted person. But that basically goes away when I go to Kiwi competitions because now I'm, I've been to them for so many years and I'm stuck with it. And um, knowing knowing people there just really helps me really. Um, so I just lose all kind of sense of nervousness or kind of worriedness, I guess. Not that I'm hugely nervous or worried at other times, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but Keeping has definitely taught me to like, practicing at something until I feel like I'm good enough or I, I feel happy with how I am. Um, and my mum's always said, I remember, uh, yeah, she always says that um, ever since I was young, that if I wanted to do something, I will kind of keep on practicing, keep on practicing until I do it. Started off with um, learning how to use my armpit to fart, like, you know, that. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a bit of a random sidetrack. And then uh, like a load of other random kind of things. Um, and then that kind of, like, I guess I got the same thing for cubing and just think that stuck a lot more than, you know, armpit farting did. Um, and... <laughs> Um, sorry. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, I've lost my train of thought now, haven't I? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think as well as, so, um, as well as, so getting into, uni- I didn't get into the university I wanted to do first time round when I applied last year. But I think if I hadn't um, done all the cubing stuff and kind of shown that I can do something if I work hard enough and I, and practice enough and I'm, I, I feel like I want to achieve something then I can do it um, and a lot of the whole it works for the university luckily um, but I've just kind of seen that same thing in other like, hobbies that I wanted to do and um, yeah I guess that's kind of that's helped me sorry that probably wasn't the best no, answer good. but <laughs> but yeah <I'm> <laughs> Um, no, I think that's all my <laughs> questions. Um, okay. Thanks again, um, Harry, for coming on. Um, you can find all of his, all the social media um, in the description below. Um, go and show him some love. Um, but yeah, thanks again for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. See ya.